Hello, I'm Eric Singer, and this is Between the Lines, and we're focusing on a deadly intersection and potential timing lights with that intersection, and also intersections throughout the city. Joining me now is Andrew Sinclair, a Gazette reporter, and you've been focusing on this. Specifically, let's start with the Mark Scheffel and Bradley Roads intersection where that deadly accident was this past weekend. Well, basically what I've been following on, following on up today is that the intersection, the lights at the intersection are being investigated to see if they determine if they can determine that the light cycle itself contributed to the crash that killed a mother and her 10-year-old son on Friday. Um, what I've been told by city traffic management is that right now everything remains under investigation. The light cycle remains as it is. It has been found to have been working properly since the time of the crash on Friday. And, Pol and Colorado Springs police are also carrying out their own investigation to figure out what happened. So right now is really kind of a waiting game, figuring out what they find out, putting all that information together. and seeing what they can come up with. Now, obviously, with this intersection, there is a family in pain. There are multiple families in pain. The person, the people who are dead, that family, and also the people who that family ran into. The question is, is there a timetable to all this? Uh, are they giving you any feeling about that? Right now, there isn't much of a timetable. Um, you know, they keep telling us, you know, the investigation is pending. A lot of the details are still under wraps because they're trying to figure out what really happened. What was said by Kathleen Cragen, who is the senior traffic manager for Colorado Springs, was that it appeared that during the time of the crash on Friday about noon that the lights were not functioning properly. The lights at that intersection are set up for a cycle called standing red, meaning that because the intersection is so remote, they actually, the lights are always red until cars approach from either direction of the intersection. The reason they want to do that is so that when drivers are approaching the intersection, they will actually slow down because they see the, the red light, as opposed to seeing a green light and thinking, oh, it's been running for a while, I should speed up and either catch it or grab the, the yellow light. So that's what they're, that's where the, the light stands right now. So it's really a matter of figuring out, you know, what police and traffic management find out from their investigations because they haven't even been able to determine if the light cycle itself contributed to the crash. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. And of course, this investigation is something that we will continue to follow and bring you the very latest. And of course, you can read Andrea Sinclair's full report on Gazette.com. For Between the Lines, I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com.